It's the 12th of April, 2021. And this practice of developing samadhi, of bringing the mind to stillness and firmness, it's something that's very important. As it's a part of this noble eightfold path of sila, samadhi, and banya. And for us practitioners, we have a certain degree of right view and that we see um, that the mind that is stirred up, the mind that is always thinking and proliferating, that's an, an, an uneaseful mind, it's not peaceful. And with a lack of peace, um, this creates an obstruction for the arising of samadhi. However, when we do develop samadhi, then this um, can give rise to wisdom. And when wisdom comes up, then this gives rise to vimuti, to liberation, freedom of our hearts. But if we don't have samadhi, and if our mindfulness isn't firm and isn't present, um, then there will be insufficient energy of heart for the arising of wisdom. And this is because of attachment that this happens. And this attachment has been in our hearts for such a long time now. This ignorance, this craving and clinging, um, it's been there in our hearts um, for such a long time, always there through all of our previous lives. And it's what's taken us to spin around in the cycle of death and birth, been firmly embedded with us um, for such a very long time. And uh, so to develop wisdom, um, what that means is that we, or through wisdom, we pull out these attachments um, that have been with us um, for so long. And we can see that these attachments are here with us right now. We don't have to take it in terms of previous lives. And that whatever we meet with, immediately attachment arises. And we can see this throughout the entire day, every day that we live. And just like how there is this COVID virus um, now, and it is mutating and uh, developing, and so that it can attach to our cells uh, with greater efficiency. And our cells, even our bodies, welcome this virus. They don't reject it. And so it's um, developing and mutating in this way. But it doesn't actually stay with our cells for such a long time. And, uh, we develop vaccines to fight against it that can cure this virus. But this attachment has been with us for a very long time. And it's not just this one life that it sticks to us. It can pass over lives into future lives. It's this attachment to me and mine. And this um, is what brings us uh, to get born again and again. This Sakaya Ditti, it's been there in our hearts for so long, this wrong view that is stuck with us, of me and mine. And the self that it gives rise to is what produces greed, hatred, and delusion. So in cultivating samadhi, what we're doing is giving our hearts a new friend, a friend of these meditation objects, of buddho, dhammo, sangha, the friend of the breath, or of developing metta, kindness. But there are also old friends there as well. These old friends are delight in sensuality or aversion, sleepiness, um, distractedness, um, the mind being annoyed or being confused and full of doubts. And these are old friends that we've had and that have been with us for a very long time. So we should come to contemplate and study our minds and see that these friends um, have been with us, they've been with us for so long, and we can believe in them very easily. So to separate out from them, to leave these friends, is something that can be quite difficult. 
And they always take us, they invite us to be deluded constantly. So what we're doing when we meditate is that we are separating out our minds from these friends, from these five objects, these hindrances, the things that obstruct peace. If we don't have a peaceful heart, then we won't see the Dhamma. We've been deluded by the sense of self, and this carries on and on with no end. So in coming to train in meditation and cultivating our minds, what we're doing is bringing the mind to peace. But we need to endure first. We need to put up a fight, because there are all of these old habits there with us. The mind likes to think. It likes to spin stories. But when we practice, we need to try and pass over these things. And if we can do that to a degree, then when we sit into meditation, then our mind will feel like it just wants to come into peace. That it's been working all day, and it wants to take a rest. But if um, we don't have mindfulness during the day, and if our samadhi isn't well established, then it's quite difficult. But if we do have these qualities, then in no long time the mind can reach peace. And this can also become a habit, this peace of heart. So we try to train ourselves in this way. And we do this all throughout the day, try to develop samadhi and mindfulness internally, knowing where it is that our mind's going off to, knowing what they're thinking about. And we don't let them go very far. We don't let them stray far away. And when we can bring up mindfulness in this way, then the practice becomes easier. But if we just abandon our minds and let them do whatever they want throughout the day, um, then they turn quite gloomy. If we allow them to go and get distracted by music and movies or news about politics, then this can sadden the mind because they've been sent out too much. So we come to sit in meditation. But if the mind's been sent out throughout the entire day, then even if we sit for one hour, we won't succeed in reaching peace. And the practice is very difficult. But if we are cautious throughout the day, um, and we try to just keep our proliferations to a minimum, and instead do a lot of chanting, bring a mindfulness a lot, then when we come to sit in meditation, the practice is a lot easier. Peace is easier to attain. And there's no need to go off into charnel grounds or into a deep forest. All we need to do is just bring up mindfulness throughout the entire day and try to be meditating as we're working and throughout all our duties, try to be meditating. And this will give us results as well. So we try and practice like this. And when we sit in meditation, we watch our breath come and go. We stay with this word of Buddha. And eventually Buddha will leave us, leaving only the breath. And then we know when the mind has reached and come, reached peace and come together into stillness. And here wisdom can arise. We can contemplate and see the body as being a collection of elements, as something that's empty. See that our bodies and the bodies of others, they're no different. They're really there's no me, there's no other there. And through seeing this, then our conceit will drop away all by itself. Because we see into the emptiness of these things, we see that really there's no self there. So through doing this, we can destroy delusion. We can get rid of Sakaya Deti, the self-view, changing our wrong views into right views, bringing up a heart which understands clearly and when we train in this way, then we should try and make this practice continuous. Do it very frequently. Do it all throughout the day. Raising up the energy of our hearts. And we all have this firm intention. We all have faith. We all have this interest in meditation. Um, really taking this meditation as something important in our lives. Because we see that life is not sure. And if we look back into the past, the last 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, it's gone by very quickly. And the time that we have left in this world is not long. In no long time, we'll have to be separated from this world. 
And so we should try and make sure that we are separated with right view. We're separated through merit, through skillfulness. They were able to destroy our wrong views. And we can do that in this life. And by doing that, we won't have eight more lives. There won't be an eighth life for us. So it's this upadana, this attachment, clinging, that takes us to be born and to die for a very long time. And we've had to go through this because we haven't passed over this attachment. And in each and every life, there's always a me there and my things. We meet with praise and also blame. We meet with gain and loss, with status and loss of status, with pleasure and with pain. But the people who have intelligence, they'll go through these experiences and build up barami at the same time. And they do this to attain to the Dhamma. For the people who have defilements controlling their lives, they'll always be deluded, always be spinning around, caught in the cycle of sangsara. There's this great strength to their clinging, they cling so tightly. So in cultivating samadhi, this is something that brings us great benefit. And sometimes the mind does gather together, it reaches a state of stillness. And we see that all the proliferation of the mind about this and about that, um, this isn't actually real. This just comes from our own minds, from our proliferation. And if we train the mind to be still, then there'll be this inner stillness there, no matter what happens. If the eye sees a form, then there's stillness. Whenever we see or experience any form of materiality, there's a stillness there within us. Because we see that these things, they're not really attractive, they're not important, they don't have any value. But when the mind gives rise to this proliferation, um, then there's a me and a mind that comes up instantly. But it's also possible to give rise to a wisdom that can know these things instantly as well as soon as they appear. And there's great brightness to this kind of mind. So I ask for all of you to train in this way. I ask for all of you to contemplate and to gain right view and to bring the mind to see things correctly. Because when the mind gives rise to me and mine, and there's a being, a self, and an other there. It's also possible to gain knowledge about this, to gain a clear understanding of this, and we're able to destroy these wrong views. But this requires our effort and our training. Because if we don't train ourselves, then there'll always be this ignorance, this craving and clinging there, these things that cover over our minds in each and every life that we take birth. So we do need to train ourselves. In all of us, we already have faith. So with this faith, we need to put in our efforts and cultivate our barami. During the Buddha's time, there were some people who attained to the Dharma with great speed. And that's because they had built up their barami, their spiritual virtues, for many, many lives uh, prior to their last life. They built up barami with many previous Buddhas um, prior to our Buddha. And so there was one monk uh, called Nandaka, and he had a lot of barami. And uh, he had built up this barami uh, with one of the previous Buddhas. And he was the foremost uh, of the Buddha's disciples in teaching. So in his uh, last life, he was able to attain to arahantship without difficulty. And then on one occasion, he taught 500 bhikkhunis. And these bhikkhunis, they had cultivated barami with him uh, previous to that. So just from this one teaching, all 500 were able to attain to Sotapanna. And uh, the Buddha was wondering why this was the case, that they all of them were able to attain to Sotapanna from just this one teaching. And... Uh, and then he wondered what uh, he should do next. So he asked this monk, uh, Nandaka, to teach them a second time. 
and he taught about the sense faculties, about the eye when it sees a form, the ear when it hears a sound, the nose when it contacts an odor, the tongue when it contacts taste, the body when it contacts tactile sensations, and the mind when thoughts and feelings come up within it, and not to be attracted or averse to these, and to let go, to see that there is no self there within it. And through this teaching, all of the 500 bhikkhunis attained to arahantship. And why is that? It shows that they had developed a lot of bhārami for a long time, for many lives with many previous Buddhas. So if we come to train our minds in this life, we should all try to attain to sotapanna first. And in that way, we won't, we won't have to have an eighth life. And then from that, um, attaining to arahanship, it's not all that difficult and it's something that we will attain to for sure. So may all of you firmly train yourselves, really put effort into your contemplation. Do it wholeheartedly with all that you have. And just like how we've all studied before and we're able to meet with success in our studies because of all the effort we put in, our meditation is just the same, it's no, differ- it's no different. It's something that we all can do, we all can succeed in. So may you set your hearts on it, may you put up a fight. Carry on with the meditation, repeat these mantras until the heart meets with peace. And then it will be able to attain to the Dhamma in no long time. All the conceit in our heart, and these things that have been buried there for such a long time, will reduce. And it's this first barrier, this barrier of self-view, of Sakaya Ditti, that's the really tough one. But once we destroy that, then it's no long time until we destroy the other things, the other fetters that bind our heart. But first we need to really try, really need to put in our efforts, um, to do it wholeheartedly. Uh, But when we do this, then we will gain knowledge. We will uh, gain freedom. So may all of you be sincere in your efforts.